Hello friends, what we are going to do today is we are going to make a, um, a forest or a group of trees using analogous colors. Okay, I'll tell you what the analogous colors are when we start making the thing. First, let's look at the supplies that we need. We need uh, crayons or yeah crayons or you can even use uh, the black marker that comes in the marker set you need watercolors and um, the color wheel that we made last week and the other half of the paper that we used last week okay so let's get into the lesson so what are analogous colors that's what we are learning today right so let's take the color wheel and then look at the colors so we have um warm colors on this side and cold colors on this side right and there is another name for um the colors are divided into different uh, names like complementary colors so complementary colors are the colors opposite to each other on the color wheel okay so red and green is a complementary color purple and yellow orange and blue are the complementary colors you guys learned that last year right complementary colors uh, these colors when you use these colors together uh, these colors stand out more okay Analogous colors are colors adjacent to each other. So what is the analogous color of red? It can be purple. It can be orange. These are the two colors next to each other on the rainbow, uh, on next to each other in the color wheel, right? So what is the analogous color of yellow? Can you guys tell me? It is orange and green. What would be the analogous color of blue, green and purple? So colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, they are called the analogous color. Okay. Uh, and when you use them uh, together, uh, it will give you a visual richness. It will, uh, it will, the colors will look good together. Okay, so that's uh, the reason uh, when you see an art where um, somebody has used the anal just the analogous colors together, that means um, the artist want everything to be like uh, blending together in a harmony. Okay, so we are going to make um, a painting using analogous colors. So you can decide what are the colors that you are going to use. You can decide uh, if you want to use red, orange and yellow together or purple, red and green uh, or, or, or orange together or green, blue and yellow or green, blue and purple together. It's up to you. What three colors together? Any three colors next to each other. These three can go together. This three can go together. This three can go together. This three can go together. So it's up to you. Choose three colors and then we are going to start painting with those. Okay. Uh, it's a landscape. So we are going to place the paper in the landscape style. Okay. And let's see uh, how we paint. So we have the um, watercolor palette here. So I'm going to use um, maybe yellow, green, and blue. Or should I use these three colors? Yellow, green, and blue, I'm going to use that. You guys don't have to use the same colors. You can choose whatever colors you want. Uh, it's a forest that we are making. Even if you use these bright colors like red, um, orange and yellow it will still look nice because it will look like the you are seeing the forest in the fall okay this would look more like it is um the end of like summer like that and these three together will make it look like it is uh, spring so it's up to you so first what i'm going to do is i'm going to take some water and the paint is right now dry 
Can you see? So we need to wake these colors. So choose the three colors that you're using and you're going to put a drop of water, two, three drops of water in each of this, okay? And then let me tell you guys quickly the parts of the brush and how to hold the brush. You guys should be knowing about this because you guys have been using brushes since kindergarten or TK, right? This is the part with which we paint. This is the metal part. Um, we don't place our fingers on this part because if you place it too close, uh, you will get paint from the uh, brush. So the best place to place your fingers is on the part on this handle uh, that is right next to the uh, the metal part you can place your fingers and you will be holding your brush just like you hold your pencil okay so and see that you take good care of the uh, the brush part because if the brush's hair is messy, you guys are going to get a messy painting. You don't want your painting to look messy, right? So take good care of your brush. So what I'm, see, I had been using this same palette for uh, like, I made maybe four lessons with this same palette for the other classes. Uh, the brush still looks new because I've been taking care of it. I don't want the colors, um, the painting to look messy. So watch how I use my brush. A good way to leave the brush hair the, the, the way it should be is don't touch it with your fingers. And then when you are washing your brush, take good care. I'll show you how to wash it when you're washing. Okay. So first let's um, make um like activate these colors right now they are sleeping right so i said said i'm using these three colors i'm going to maybe these three colors maybe i'm going to put a uh, two three drops three drops of water in each of this color three colors that i need okay so Three drops of water then what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to take some water and put it on the paper where I want or maybe I can skip that don't put it because it's going to become too watery so we'll not do that way we are just going to um, swirl our brush in whatever color you want to start with I'm going to start with purple so I'm going to swirl my brush I'm um, keeping in mind not to swirl too fast. We don't want to get the paint into the other uh, side, right? So I'm going to, we don't want to mix the colors. So I think I have enough purple. So I'm going to just spread it like that. When the your brush is dry, dip it in water. Dip again in water. Dip one more time in water each time it gets dry. I'm just going to put purple in few places. So whatever color you're using, spread that out. You are just going to put it in some random places. If your brush is dry, dip it in water, maybe here. Okay, now I'm going to wash my brush. See how I'm washing my brush? I'm like uh, sweeping the floor of the container, going like left to right. I'm not doing this. I'm just going this way and this way. And then I wipe. The brush is nice and clean. This is a very thin brush. It has not that much hair. So if you uh, like do this, or scrub your paper with the brush the brush is going to lose its hair okay so we don't want you need to take care of the brush i'm going to take some blue this time i'm swirling in blue to activate blue i'm going to when the brush is dry put dip it in water You can go close to the other color. It doesn't matter. 
because analogous colors even if it mix uh, it will be fine okay so each time my brush is dry i'm dipping in some water i'm going to put some here now i'm going to take green swirl my brush in green i'm going to fill in the spaces that is left oh i'm going to wipe it not wipe i'm dipping in water so i'm going to uh finish it this off we are almost done with the coloring part if you so see i'm washing and then wiping if you want it to be a little bit more dark in some places you can go ahead and put some more paint i think i'm fine i like the way it has turned out the smudge part no paint is needed so what i'm going to do is i'm going to let it dry and then you can come back when it dries and then continue the video and watch what is done next so now this is dry so what we're going to do is we are going to um draw the trees okay so uh, i'm going to put this also away this is the brush needs to be put away um see after using the brushes uh intact i'm putting it away i'm not closing this watercolor right now though this dried up this is still wet so if you close it now it's going to get moldy okay so i'm going to but set this aside though but i'm not closing it uh what i'm going to do next is i'm going to turn this into a uh forest the purple looks like pink right now right it doesn't matter i guess so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw some trees i'm going to start with the trunk so guys you can um use the black marker mm, that comes in the uh crayola markers i'm using a sharpie because mine is a teeny bit still wet okay so you guys wait for this to completely dry i'm going to make the first shape or should we try some tree or i'm going to show the trees over here itself and the next type of tree maybe like a leaf like a triangle this one maybe this way Okay, so draw the trees and then let's see. Uh, let me show you some ways you can uh, make the branches. So you can make it simple like this. If you want to make it even more fancier, add more branches. What I'm doing is just making Y's on this. Did you notice that? So I have one tree done. Maybe this one. I'm just making lines like that. Okay. Hmm. This. this way let me look at some examples
Only this one. These are like fork trees, like whimsical trees. Just going to put this like spread them out maybe one more circle would look good around this so you can come up with your own pattern for the trees or you can use some of these patterns that I showed then next I'm going to make the trunk a little bit more darker okay Just adding some um, ground, separating the ground from the sky. So just with some lines, simple lines. Okay. So if you want, you can add uh, more details to this. It's up to you. Um, maybe. I'm just making it a little bit more fancy, that's all. So, then once you're done, sign your name or write your name. Room number, uh, not room number, grade and your room number. I'm just putting some random room number, okay? And then that's it. So, when you're done, what I want you guys to do is... Um, Take a picture of this and email me in the uh, ID email uh, address that I show in the end. Um, put back all the other supplies like markers or if you use crayons, you could have used crayons, black crayons also over here. Uh, put all those things back and wait for the watercolor to dry. You don't want to turn this moldy. Put that also away. Close this and put that away. In the, everything goes back in the envelope, okay? Um, you are going to save this thing um, because we need this as a guide for the uh, future lessons also. So what we learned today is we learned how to use the analogous colors together. So see, this analogous color together, it is going to uh, nicely. Like uh, It's like... Uh, uh, it's like blending well right if I used um, complementary colors like opposite colors in the color wheel like I said red and green or yellow and purple or orange and blue it would uh, just the colors would stand out more here it is like blending together they are in a harmony so uh, that's how we used the analogous colors colors next to each other on the color wheel so um remember the word analogous colors okay and complementary colors these three uh, these two things remember those and that is our lesson for today so till we meet next week bye bye